Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about ABG sampling errors. This is a very important topic for critical care nurses to be kept in mind whenever we take ABG samples. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel. Do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. As we all know, an ABG analysis is a blood test taken from an artery that measures the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide that is found in the blood. An ABG is done to evaluate respiratory status, metabolic status and acid base balance. Inappropriate collection and handling of arterial blood specimens can produce incorrect results. And this may sometimes lead to misdiagnosis. Now, what are the reasons for an inaccurate blood test? Let's look into it one by one. First comes air bubbles. This is the most common error occurring in ABG sampling. Simple to say, air bubbles or error bubbles. Now, what are the causes for air bubbles to get formed? When we withdraw blood forcefully, there are chances for formation of air bubbles. And after collecting blood sample, intense or vigorous shaking might also cause air bubbles to get formed. Air bubbles might also be caused due to careless transport of specimen to the lab. Now, what are the effects of air bubbles in the sample? There might be variation in the readings like increase in partial pressure oxygen, decrease in partial pressure carbon dioxide, and increase in pH. How do we prevent this? Once we collect the sample, inspect the syringe for presence of any air bubbles. And if found, gently tap and remove the air bubbles. When it is transferred to a container or specimen container, Avoid vigorous shaking. Next comes mixing of venous blood with the arterial blood. Even a small amount of venous blood when mixed with arterial blood might cause significant changes in the ABG readings. Let's look into the causes. While collecting sample, when the position is not maintained properly, there might be chances of getting pricked in the vein. Use of large needles and multiple pricks also create chances of mixing venous blood with the arterial blood. The effects include changes in readings like decrease in partial pressure oxygen, increase in partial pressure carbon dioxide, and decrease in saturation. Now, how do we prevent this? Use of self-filling ABG syringes which fill automatically only when it hits an artery and not a vein. Next is use of short bevel needles which makes it easier to puncture the arteries. When short bevel needles are used, position them at an angle of 45 degree to collect the sample. Next comes dilution of arterial blood. What are the causes? While collecting ABG sample from an arterial line, there might be chances of mixing the flush solution with the sample collected and this might create dilution of the sample. Excess use of heparin might also cause dilution of the sample. The effects include changes in readings like increase in PO2, decrease in PCO2, increase in sodium level, increase in chloride level and decrease in potassium level. Now, how do we prevent this? Clear the dead space. How do we do this? Patients who are having arterial line connected with pressurized saline bag, we do frequent flushing in order to check the accurate blood pressure. In such cases, we have to clear the dead space before collecting the ABG sample from the arterial line. And this we do it by removing certain amount of blood from the line and discard it and then again repeat the same for collecting the ABG sample. 
Use of preheparinized syringes also prevent dilution of arterial blood. Next comes hemolysis. What causes hemolysis of the sample? After collecting sample, vigorous or intense shaking might cause hemolysis of the sample. Also, placing samples directly on ice cubes might also cause hemolysis. The effects include changes in readings like increase in potassium level, decrease in sodium, and decrease in calcium. How do we prevent this? After collecting the sample, avoid vigorous shaking of the sample and do not place the samples directly on the ice. Next comes clotting. What causes the samples to get clot? Fail to use heparinized syringes or improper mixing might also cause clotting of the sample. And the effects include increase in potassium level. Moreover, use of such clotted sample might also affect the pathway of ABG sample analyzer. How do we prevent this? Use of heparinized syringes and proper technique for mixing like rolling it between the palms and inverting it vertically. Other common sampling errors include patient or specimen misidentification. This can be prevented by proper identification of patient by using minimum two identifiers and labeling the sample before puncturing. Next comes insufficient volume and this can be prevented by use of self-filling syringes or collecting at least minimum of 1 to 2 ml of blood. Next comes inappropriate collection container. This can be prevented by collecting the samples in appropriate ABG containers. Next is prolonged storage. Delayed analysis might not represent the patient's actual status. And hence, once the sample is collected, measure it immediately or analyze within 30 minutes or as per the hospital policies. Next is transport delay. As mentioned before, the sample has to be analyzed within 30 minutes or as per the hospital policies. Next is sample collected soon after suction also produce sampling error. Why? Because before, during and after suction, we pre-oxygenate patient which might cause changes in the partial pressure of oxygen readings. And hence, sample can be collected 15 minutes after suctioning the patient. So this is all about ABG sampling errors which will be very useful for nurses in collecting ABG samples. And these 11 points will help nurses to avoid sampling errors. If you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.